everyone today we are learning about geo database it stands for gene expression omnibus this database falls into the category of databases who analyze the functional genomics data so this database specifically contains microarray data and it is a repository which is freely available and anyone can use it and this repository has both clinical as well as preclinical data so if you want to reach here you have to remember its url which is ncbi.nlm.nih.gov/geo and otherwise if you cannot remember this you just have to go to google write geo database and that's it you will reach here so i understand that you are here for the very first time so you do not know any accession number so let us start with keywords so today i'm going to uh, teach you how to use a geo database so let's say let me write diabetes so this is a keyword i'm using if you work on parkinson's disease write parkinson's if you work on cancer write the type of cancer you're working on so it will show you the results remember it is a keyword so wherever the diabetes word is written in any of the study all the studies will appear here so i'm clicking the number and see i have received results here so let's say i'm only interested in homo sapiens and homo sapiens have 23293 entries for diabetes so once i clicked it so now i'm looking at the data exclusively for homo sapiens you can see it here so now our uh, geo database has an inbuilt software whose name is geo2r so today i'm going to give you a little um glimpse of how we can use it in case we are working on some paper so first of all we have to find out a study which we like and second since we are going to work on the geo 2r software so we need to find which study is giving us that option for example look at the study number one it it is it runs on sra run selector so we are not doing it today we are you know interested in geo2r so wherever you will see this line analyze with geo2r so this is the place wherein you can come and work so for today's um, work let us go with this study so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the study and i'll open the study in another tab so what you should do is you should come to the entry and read about it this is called as an accession number an accession number is a unique identifier which is given to a entry in a database and this accession number helps you reach to this entry directly so next time if i will come back to this database and i want to come back to this entry again i do not have to write the keyword diabetes again and again i just keep uh, the accession number handy and i can come here so let's start the status is that it was uh, it was uh, you know uh, this entry was uh, public uh, was public on july 6 2021 which is very recent and the study is done on homo sapiens and the title of the study is effects of oral glucose load on gene expression of peripheral blood mononuclear cells in asian indian men which looks like a very good study so if you want to study about the summary and the objectives of the study you can come here and see it if you want to know the overall design of the microarray uh, test you can come and read it here you can read the names of the contributors also you will find the id of the person who is involved in this study probably the one who has who has conceptualized this study so you if you have any queries regarding this particular study you can email them 
and now scroll down and you will see a button which says analyze with GEO2R. So let me tell you what R stands for. R here stands for a language called, called as R and Bioconductor. This language is used for solving various type of problems in bioinformatics and one of them is microarray data analysis. So language R can be used for solving the for analyzing the uh, microarray data. So uh, this inbuilt software is anyway using the R coding. So I'm going to click it and I'll reach here. So now see this data is here and it is very well categorized. If I want to see the glucose metabolism status, you can see that few people are normal, few are pre-diabetic. So here we are going to study about the differences between the normal and the pre-diabetic people. If you want to, you know, do some other type of categorizations, you can come here, click the source name, and it is also telling you pre-diabetic fasting, sam fasting sample and this is pre-diabetic 2-hour post oral glucose sa uh, load sample. So what I'm trying to tell you here is that please do not go by only one category. Please see both the categories otherwise you'll end up doing your study entirely wrong. So as you can see the this population and this population both are pre-diabetic but one is fasting and another blood sample the another population's blood sample was taken after two hours when they were given the oral uh, glucose so if you will compare both these two samples the results are going to be different even in the pre-diabetic population and similarly goes for the people those who are normal and healthy so if you will compare the one who is healthy and fasting to somebody who is healthy but was given oral uh, dose oral glucose dose and then the sample blood sample was taken post uh, post two hours so then the expression of the genes will be different everybody knows that it is going to be different so please choose your uh, populations very carefully for example uh, i can do multiple analysis here for example i can uh, you know uh, you know compare the pre-diabetic fasting with pre-diabetic normal uh, pre-diabetic uh, normal fasting uh, population and the ex uh, result which i'm going to get then is going to be different and if i will compare these two the pre-diabetic fasting and pre-diabetic uh, two hours post oral glucose load so this is going to be different so before you uh, do this experiment please make sure what you want to do make your fundas very clear about what you want in this experiment so let me show you what you can do here is you can make you, you first of all have to make groups because it is a statistical analysis and a population has to be compared with another population. So we have to first of all make the population. So let us create it. So first I'm going to write is healthy but healthy fasting. And now I'm making pre-diabetic fasting. I have only created two population. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to uh, copy the pre-diabetic fast example. I'll click here. So now the uh, population is categorized under the keyword pre-diabetic fasting. I'll come down and I'll choose them and then I'll keep them here. It is advised that you keep the equal number of candidates in each of the categories. So since now I know that they're different, so I have to redo the entire process. So what I'll do is I'll write again, pre-diabetic fasting. Please do not write A, B, C, D here because eventually you will not know what you were planning to do eventually and you'll be lost in the game so see it is six and six now the population the number of candidates in both the population is also fine so now we can move forward you have to come here and then press the analyze button so now it has started working like i told you it works 
by using the R script. It is using the R language to analyze the data. So this it is what, what is happening in the background right now. So we took an example wherein uh, we compared the populations, uh, two populations wherein the uh, diabetic and healthy, both of them, uh, pre-diabetic and healthy people, both of them were given the oral solutions. But for this example, if you remember, I did not choose the population with the oral sample. So now we are going to see what the differences will be eventually so uh, now this is your result and this is the uh, different these are the results uh, of the top differentially expressed genes in this condition so if i will click any one of them let's say uh, this one spc25 so i'll click it and you will receive a nice and good uh, you know graph so see in pre-diabetic condition the expression of the gene is down regulated when in healthy fasting it's okay so now the expression of the gene which gene spc25 is reduced as compared to healthy fasting this graph do not mean that there is a total absence of this gene in our sample otherwise it would not have come here right so this particular graph is only showing you that it is down regulated in comparison to healthy one or otherwise if i will turn the table i will say the expression of the gene in healthy is upregulated than the pre-diabetic one so I can say it both the ways so now let's come down and let's open something else this is a, a protein called as CHAT choline oacetyl transferase so see now the in diabetic population the expression of the gene is upregulated while in healthy the expression of this gene is down regulated so the entire exercise is being done and the results are shown in comparison to healthy so if you will see the column t this is called this this is the column wherein the results have come because of the student t test so you will see two places when the results are negative and in these two places the results are positive so since the analysis in the analysis if you remember we will go uh, we will see the groups again first the first uh, column was healthy the second column was diabetes so now the comparison is done between these but the comparison is done by looking at the healthy one so when i say negative 4.85 here on my screen it means it's down regulated in healthy and up regulated in pre-diabetic if it says positive 4.4 then it means it's up regulated in healthy and down regulated in pre-diabetic so if this sample had been above and this category had been down so all the negatives will be positive and positives will be negative so you have to run it yourself in order to understand it more so this is why when you will run it sometimes you will see that your data is not matching so ladies and gentlemen it's not about your data being changed all the time it's just which category did you you know created first and which you created last so since uh, healthy fasting is the control in an experiment so it is always advisable that you keep the control at the first and the other categories done so then the entire you know comparison will be done in relation to the control i hope i'm clear so see in this uh, graph the healthy fasting has positive values and the pre-diabetic has negative values and the t value is positive as well so if i will not open this graph and i will only look at the t values i can easily say that the gene expression is up in healthy and down in pre-diabetic so this is how we do it so if, next time when i will go back to the groups and i will uh, you know I will uh, 
change the uh, columns for example in the next round i'm going to uh, compare the healthy fasting to healthy oral glucose consumption population so i'm not going to see these uh, gene list again this is not going to happen i'm going to see the other gene list why because you have uh, changed the population altogether right so look at this one it says negative 4.16 these are the t values so it says negative and just look at your data the average of your data is negative wherein the average of the of this data is positive so this one is less this one is higher so since control is negative so in t value you will always see negative values wherever wherever the uh, you know the regulation wherever the you know uh, expression is less in case of control so this was about how you just uh, look at the data and you understand what is going on so in this picture if you will see this picture you will see that the data is already normalized mostly in geo database the values are already normalized normalized means all of them are at the same scale so that they can be compared so now let me walk you to other uh, columns so what you can do is uh, you have to click this download full table and then a uh, separate video uh, you know separate window will open and you can download the entire uh, gene list on your desktop so these genes will be between 8000 to 13000 or something like that i'll show it to you later so this is how you can save it and otherwise in this uh, in this uh, you know on the on the on the site right now where i am uh, you will only find 250 genes top 250 up uh, dysregulated genes so now let me tell you why in the gene uh, symbol column this is the gene symbol column right and this is the expansion of all the gene names so i will tell you why uh, these columns do not have any name while these columns have some of the other name so uh, these entries, uh, when we will click it and we will go into the details of the entries, you will find either these are long non-coding RNAs or these are miRNAs or these are anything except mRNAs. But these entries, these are mRNAs. So that is why these entries were easily, you know, uh, compared to the uh, databases and uh, one could make out the uh, which gene it is but for uh, cases like these since it is uh, non-coding rna or any other type of rna but not mrna so that is why they have not written any gene here so you will not find it here so now i was taking you to the select column window if you will come here you will see many uh, options here so uh, before you download your full table from this area uh, make sure what you want in your excel sheet so if you want to know about the process and the function it performs in the body come and click it and if i for example do not want log fc i do not want b value i do not want adjusted p value also i'll remove them and i'll press the button set so you will see that the new columns have been added and few have a few more and the few have been removed so this is how you can uh, play between the uh, columns so see you can uh, write see the name of the gene and then its function also so i hope this video was useful for you uh, please perform it and if you have any questions please uh, write it in the uh, comment section i'll get back to you thank you